Today I'm going to basically speak about turning agricultural waste into a value-added commodity. So if we take a look at these pictures, starting on the left, we can see what is agricultural scrap. It's plastic, it's waste. We generate this in our farms by the millions of pounds a year. This all is trucked to the landfills. So in the center, we see these are feedstock pellets. We use these pellets once the plastic has been reprocessed, we can reintroduce it into a manufacturing process. And in this example, I'm gonna use trash bags. So this is a perfect material. We take this from the field, recycle it, into a usable garbage bag. And if you notice on the right hand bottom corner, there's a little uh, raccoon and there's a little symbol. This actually has a mint additive. And the idea is that raccoons don't like mint, so therefore they're not gonna tear into the trash. My question is, do the raccoons, if they do like it, they're gonna run around with good smelling breath. <laughs> How many people here use trash bags? I'm sure pretty much all of us do. So what if I told you there was a new gas station in town and gas was only a dollar a liter? Do I have your attention now? Okay, well bottom line, why we recycle agricultural plastics is waste is money lost. So we don't need to waste. We have an opportunity to keep our lands and farms cleaner and therefore more sustainable. If we take care of the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. My name is Shane McKenna and my family started manufacturing plastics pretty close to 40 years ago. From the day I was born 33 years ago, I've spent uh, most of my life, like I say, in plastics, and I've spent many hours stuck in a shipping office asking that question, can we go home now? <laughs> no, there's work to be done. So when I was 16, or old enough to basically enter the workforce, I was placed into our lab facility in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I did a variety of plastic tests, melt indexing, and things like this. So, and in this picture, this is my aunt, actually, roughly back in the 80s. She was one of five family members who operated the business. And it's very important, as you see here, she's actually color matching. It's very important that when a customer orders a color, they get the correct color. They get the correct color. So if we order a sky blue and they get navy blue instead, the customer's not very happy. <clears throat> so as consumers, getting back to agricultural waste, we're all familiar with trash and waste. But what do we do with it? We don't want it. We need to throw it out. We need to dispose of it. Most of this stuff heads for the landfills. This is why recycling is so very important. And again, we see just lots of trash. It all goes to the landfills, buried and virtually never seen again. But what happens when an entire industry generates a waste product, a byproduct of their manufacturing process, no longer needed? <clears throat> if we did not find homes for these items, we would literally be buried in this stuff. Well, how much plastic, you might add, ask? Shane, is there really that much? In a study conducted, or I conducted with Conestoga College in 2011, I quote, approximately 8.5 million pounds of agricultural film are sold per year in Canada. If we were to extrapolate that over a 10 year period, that's 85 million pounds of plastic. That may, to, to me, that's not a lot because most of our companies, we produce 100 million pounds of plastic in one year. And we're just one of about 50 people in Canada. So, as an example here, in industrial waste, oat hulls. On the left, you see a pile of oat hulls. This is a result of the milling of oats. Once they're milled, we have a byproduct. We can take this byproduct and we put it into a variety of feeds, animal feeds, fish feeds, dog foods, whatever it may be, we find a home for it. So back to agricultural waste. We have millions of pounds of it. From greenhouses to farms, they're all valuable one way or the other. So, this scrap plastic, for example, if we didn't reprocess it and reuse it, would go straight for the landfill. <clears throat> so, this is where we begin to merge polymer science with agricultural technology. Not only did I see an opportunity to make a difference, but I saw an opportunity to create a more sustainable way of producing plastics. I saw a way of creating a sustainable, creative polymer solution for a great Canadian industry agriculture and farming. These are our typical agricultural plastics. You can see our white bale wrap on the left. In the center, that's a corrugated pipe. Generally, it's high-density polyethylene. And again, we see on the right there, that's some silage film. Bottom left are greenhouse high tunnels, which are primarily a tri-layer film. Again, it's a good example of an industrial-sized silage farm, yet to be planted. And on the bottom right, we have a farmer who, by the appearance, he's actually wrapping his bales in the film. 
Maybe you're familiar with this plastic, so you've noticed them around. <clears throat> Children often say they look like giant marshmallows. Typically, they are filled with hay, but in some cases, we fill them with grain, barleys, or oats. This picture actually was just taken outside of Heidelberg roughly two weeks ago. The common thread between all of these plastics is polyethylene. This is the base raw material. Polyethylene or low density polyethylene, as we know. There are many different types of plastics, but polyethylene is what we want. We have polyethylene, polypropylene, PVC, ABS, polycarbonate, polystyrenes. I could stand up here for the rest of the day reciting different types of plastic. The list literally goes on forever. So, roughly two years ago, I received a phone call from a group called Agricultural Technologies. They asked me to come down, take a look at what they do. But more importantly, what we could do with the plastics and how they collected them. ATI, in a nutshell, collects a variety of agricultural wastes, grapevines, cocoa husks, greenhouse waste, and agricultural plastics. Separating the incoming waste, and by doing so, producing biomass pellets for fuel, colored mulches, soil blends for the consumer market. So basically, we sat together, and we put a list of products together, things that would work for this type of film. Plastic bins, plastic sheets. Again, we see our garbage bag. And like I say, there's a variety of different manufacturing processes with plastics. Plastics is just not plastics. There's, like I say, different kinds, different melt indexes. So we had to come up with different manufacturing techniques, whether it was an injection molding, blow molding, rotational molding, or just compounding. And after looking at a variety of incoming wastes, there was one in particular that stood out at Agricultural Technologies. And after some research, we found it to be a mineral fiber, an aluminosilicate mineral. So now the gears started to turn. How can we utilize this material? It's very common to use mineral fibers or minerals of any description in, in plastics as an additive or a filler. Now we can start turning a creative idea into an innovative one, <clears throat> implementing a plan of action. Louis Pasteur once said, chance favors the prepared mind. So since we use plastics in fillers, similar to the way that a, a baker would use baking soda, yeast, or different flours, we can, they can make the, the cake taste better. But in this case, we want the plastic to behave a little bit better. So again, by adding additives, colorants, it gives the plastic a better function and appeal. Makes it more resistant to tearing or sunlight fading. But far more popular is just coloring the plastic. So, after we took this material back to the lab, to our pleasant surprise, it worked. It was functioning in a variety of different carriers, and it was providing us the physical properties that we wanted. So therefore, in doing that, we created what I like to call a recycled agricultural resin, useful in almost all the products that we've looked at and they looked into. So here's where upcycling becomes more understandable and tangible. <clears throat> but like I say, more importantly, it's tangible here at this point. Creating a cleaner and a healthier future for everybody. Obviously, we're very concerned about our futures and how we can create a sustainable solution to our ongoing problems, and plastic is one of many of them. So basically, there's a revolution of creative change where old ideas are becoming new ones. So when I leave you today, please always remember that one industry's waste is another industry's gold. And, oh gosh, that's, uh, that's my last slide. Thank <laughs> you.